There are a variety of methods used to install PVC trim. With select trim, there are a few in particular that we strongly recommend. First, when it comes to the trim around windows and doors, which we're going to cover here first, it's a good idea whenever possible to assemble those parts first prior to applying them to the wall. Use a good PVC cement at all the joints, with the exception of maybe fascia board or freeze boards, where you want to create a scarf joint or even better yet a shiplap joint to help manage the expansion contraction of those long pieces. And also, we really prefer that you use the Cortex screws and plugs to fasten the product to the wall. And we'll get into that a little bit more later. Working with cellular PVC is a lot like working with wood. So the tools and methods that we use are very similar. And there's a variety of different profiles within the select product line that'll enable you to create a variety of different trim styles, such as the one that I'm going to show you here. Now you'll remember that we put one by two furring around the window so that we could bump our trim out and create the necessary pocket for expansion and contraction of the siding. But you might notice here that I added a second one by two at the top and a second one by two here at the bottom. The reason I did that is because the trim style that I'm going to put together incorporates not just one by four uh, trim, but also a one by six. So as a rule of thumb, if you're using one by four trim, one furring strip is sufficient. If you're going to be using anything wider than that, you'll probably want to add a second furring strip. In this case, it's a one by six, so I'm going to put these two furring strips tightly together. If I were doing something a one by eight or a one by 10, I'd probably spread these two apart a bit, uh, but still keeping in mind that I needed to, I need to create that necessary pocket uh, depth behind the siding. So I would adjust them accordingly. To begin, obviously we need to get the measurements of the window. Now because we know that the window trim does expand and contract a bit, when we're measuring the window, we want to add a minimum of one eighth of an inch to the width and one eighth of an inch to the height of the window uh, in order to allow for our expansion and contraction to happen without pinching the window at all. I also added to my window measurements to take into account the size and material I'm going to be using around the window. For example, along the sill I extended the measurement by 7 inches because along the jams I'm going to be using 1x4. And now that I've got all my parts measured and cut, it's time to begin assembling them. As we said before, whenever possible it's always a good idea to use PVC cement along all the joints. But really, the magic of getting all these parts assembled and held tightly together prior to applying them to the wall is this tool right here. This is called the Craig Jig. If you buy the master kit with this, you'll get what you see here and one clamp. I just have two clamps and you'll see why. I like to have a secondary clamp. The nice thing about this particular jig is that you're able to clamp it to your work table to begin with so it holds everything nicely in place while you're creating your pocket holes. There are a couple adjustments that we need to make on this thing before we can, can use it. To begin with, <coughs> there's this insert here, and on this insert there are lines of measurements, and those measurements are what you adjust to based upon whatever material, thickness material, that you're going to be using. And in my case, obviously, I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch material, so I'd set my measurement here to three quarters of an inch. Tighten in my set screw in the back and I'm ready to go there for three quarters of an inch material. The second thing that I want to do is adjust my drill bit. It's really nice they've got a, a collar on the drill bit. It works with an Allen wrench and a gauge here along the side of the jig. You just adjust it to three quarters of an inch material. Tighten your set screw. I'll double check that and we're ready to go. Now to use the jig, simply put your board in, make sure that you keep the back side towards the fence here. A nice system to actually clamp your board into the jig itself, and then you're ready to drill. 
you'll see once I'm done, actually that creates a real nice pocket hole there, ready for assembly. Now that I've got the pocket holes drilled in my side pieces, I can begin to assemble the basic frame around the window. My trim design calls for a skirt board along the bottom, so I'm using a 1x6 along the bottom, 1x4s along the sides, and a 5 quarter by 6 with some ram's crown along the top. I'm going to start by putting some PVC cement along this seam. Now be careful, use very little. You don't want any of the PVC cement to get on the Kynar finish because it can damage that finish. Use the Craig clamps to actually hold these two parts together very even so you don't have any problems with the unevenness of the boards. Now the screws you want to use, make sure that you're using their blue coat weather resistant screws. That's one joint. Now I can go ahead and put my header on. Now, but because it's five quarter, I'm not going to use the clamps. I'm just going to hold it by hand in position. Okay, here's my basic frame. Very good, all tight. Okay, my next step is I'm going to put the ram's crown along the top of the window. When I measured this crown, the way I measured it is so that I'll return this crown around the sides, and when I do that, the return will end up flush with the back side of my molding pieces. I'm going to glue these returns on first using PVC cement, but also something else here. Now this is just a brand name, it's called 2P10, but basically this is a super glue and an activator that will act as a clamp to hold the parts together until the PVC glue actually has time to, to melt and, and bond the two parts together. You don't want to use just these parts because over time this will break apart, this will not. So again, this is the actual glue that holds the parts together over long term and this will act as your clamp so that you can instantly put parts together and continue to work. This activator actually just makes this glue react right away. So to begin with, I'm going to put a bead of super glue, or not super glue, but my PVC glue along the part. And then I'm going to run a, another bead of this glue also. And then on my other part, I'm going to spray some of this uh, activator, being careful not to get too much on the face. The easiest way I find is to line up the tip of your part, of your miter, and then just bring it back and hold it for a second, and you're ready to go. Again, that's 
the activator and the super glue acting as your clamp. But one thing to note is make sure that you have everything lined up because there really is very little time to adjust anything. So I'll just do the other side as well. Excellent. Okay. Now we'll be able to place the ram's crown down on to the, uh, the header. Before we do that, though, we'll run some PVC cement along the top. And place our crown molding down on top of that, aligning it with the top of the header. Then we're just going to fasten it through the back using some bugle head screws. Okay, now we're going to use the same technique as we used there on the uh, add, adding the sill to the skirt board. Run a little PVC glue. And then we'll align the top of the sill to the top of the skirt board. And fasten it down with some uh, bill head screws. Now we have a complete window frame ready to go on the wall. <laughs> Drive the screw all the way in until the felt part of the, uh, the bit actually touches the surface of the trim and you'll know that you're deep enough to completely seat the plug. Then take one of the plugs and obviously put it in the hole. Now to completely seat this into the hole, what I like to use is just a scrap piece of trim. Tap on the trim and the plug then is flush to the surface. And we'll continue to do this around the window, staying about two inches from any of the, the cut ends. So we'll say two inches in here, two inches in from the, the top, and make sure that we space them no more than 16 inches apart. Now once we've got the plugs, the screws and the plugs entirely in around the window, the last thing to do really is to finish coat these cut edges so that they match your trim. And for that, you would just use the select paint dabber. So I'll just take the applicator and again just kind of dab it on the edge. You'll do the same thing here at the bottom at the sill and that along the skirt board. Use the same method to fasten the outside corners and other trim on the house using the cortex screws and the plugs. A couple things to keep in mind though about corners. First, make sure that you aren't placing any fasteners in that pocket going through the siding and pinning the siding. It should always be in the furring strip. Secondly, 
Make sure that you aren't drawing the corner one way or the other. Square it up on those furring strips so that, so that it's not tight against the siding on either side. There should actually be a small gap between the siding and the corner itself. When you need to install more than one consecutive piece of trim, such as an extended freeze board or an outside corner or something like that, we recommend that you do one of two things at the seams. Either create a shiplap, you can use a router for this, or a scarf joint. In either case, make sure that you use the select paint dabber and paint that cut edge so that when the two pieces do shrink a bit in the winter time, it's color underneath. And remember, as a rule, do not glue butt joints. Glue miter joints only. If you have to run a freeze board around a corner, you're going to want to miter that corner and you're going to want to glue that. For that reason, we recommend that you only have a piece of four foot long on either side of that miter. That way, there's not a lot of movement in the winter time for that and the miter will stay closed and glued very nicely and all the expansion will happen with the larger butt joints. Let's review the basics. First of all, when trimming around windows and doors, it's a good idea to assemble the pieces prior to applying them to the wall. And when you're measuring for those pieces, remember, measure an eighth of an inch large on the width and the height to give some room for the movement of the product. Glue and screw the pieces together. Using a Craig jig is a great way to do that quickly and easily. Fasten the pieces to the wall using the select Cortex screws and plugs. And make sure that those screws only go through the 1x2 and not the pocket so it won't pin the siding to the wall. Make sure the fasteners are no more than 16 inches apart. And when you're doing long extended pieces like freeze boards or fascia boards, Make sure that you use a scarf or a shiplap at the joints. And lastly, use the select paint dabbers to cover over all the fresh cuts and areas where you need touch up. Now let's take a look at some video from an actual job site. 